The AI Watershed with Modi Shatner and Daniel Singer. Uh, yeah, we, we are uh, now uh, working from uh, uh, shared um, offices. Uh, we just uh, left our office one month ago and we are going to uh, go into a new one in a few months. So in the meantime, we are uh, here and uh, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's a good timing because uh, anyway, uh, we are not here every day and probably not going to be here uh, for for a while uh, reading the news. So uh, yeah. Let's see what will happen. Why don't we just start with um, uh, deep pathology, an intro on what you're doing, um, you know, what, what problems you're solving, yeah. um, and we can, I guess, move forward and backward from there. Uh, yeah, sure, no, no problem. So, so, so deep pathology is a um, relatively uh, young uh, initiative that I co-founded with uh, Nitan and uh, Jacob. Nitan is my husband for the last one moment, 31 years, and uh, Jacob is our partner, is the CTO of the company. Uh, we have been um, in under the framework of Sagivtech, our R&D projects company. Uh, we started doing projects in computational pathology and uh, digital pathology, uh, and they turned out to be very, very nice and interesting. And um, so we got more and more involved. And uh, since also we, uh, so, so Nitan and I, we founded Sagiftech like 12 years ago. So we came to a point where we were look, really looking to bring the technological team that we've built here to, to also create a product. And this turned out to be an interesting opportunity for us. And this is why we established the pathology exactly two years ago in September, 2018. Uh, deep pathology is um, the main thing that we are doing is, um, or our vision is to bring AI uh, solutions creation capabilities to the hands of uh, pathologists and biology researchers. Um, and, as you know, radiology went through the digital revolution like 20 years ago, and since then, a lot of AI and the computer vision uh, companies rose to, to, to bring algorithms to, to, um, to analyze their radiolo radiology images. And, and this is exactly what is happening in, for pathology in the last few years. Uh, and this is very important for both diagnostics where you actually need closed solutions that are um, excelling in solving one problem like prostate cancer or breast cancer um, uh, decision support system. And, but, but pathology, um, the, the art where you uh, pathologists have already for the last 150 years been looking on the biopsies uh, sliced and stained under a microscope to see um, structures and count cells and, and analyze whether there is cancer or not, etc. So the, the application of AI algorithms uh, to this domain is also crucial in pharma research, development of um, new drugs, um, uh, all that involves personalized uh, medical care uh, and personalized uh, uh, medicines and preclinical and clinical trials where you need to see the effect of drugs on the tissue. And um, this means that there are like dozens, hundreds, or thousands of uh, new problems that should be solved on a day-to-day -day basis when you are, um, let's say, a big pharma doing research. And, and, and the, the Deep Pathology Studio, our main uh, uh, tool, is a platform that uh, is built upon uh, three generic modules for cell detection, object detection, and localization, and tissue segmentation. And we allow pathologists to create their own solutions by providing positive and negative examples of what they are looking for. And using the backbone of our system, we are able to create very quickly and based on relatively small amounts of data, uh, solutions for the specific problem that they wanna solve. Uh, we launched it in um, one year ago when people were still going to conferences in a conference in Nice. And since then, I think um, it was, we, we already have paying customers, a lot of collaborators and dozens of algorithms that were developed using our system because, um, and, and, and you know, it's, it's not us who are developing the algorithms, but we provide a platform for our customers to develop the algorithms. 
And, and I think that's all, this is also what differentiates us from other great uh, uh, members of the ecosystem here in Israel, because there are other companies who are dealing with um, uh, digital and computational pathology, but they are more in the, I would say, the more traditional uh, work frame of get me the data, get me the problem, annotate it, and I will build for you a black box solution, which is which is cool, and I, I know the guys, and I really appreciate what they're doing. But we are tackling it from uh, a different point of view, and also trying to solve different kind of problems. So it's it's like, if I understand it correctly, is like it's like uh, supervised learning that the researcher is tagging the sample or the results, and this is how the algorithm is is developing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So what you do is you, you, you like there, there is a hidden layer of the algorithm and you also only expose uh, the, the like, okay, just click here, 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 if this is a red blood cell or whatever, and we'll do the rest. This is like yeah. a simple, stupid yeah. algorithm. Um, it's, 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 I, I wouldn't call, well, simple, yes, stupid, absolutely no. no because not, I'm, I'm talking about the UI, not the, you know, yeah, it, well, we, uh, I, I, well, our um, target customers are uh, uh, pathologists and uh, biology researchers. And uh, uh, right now I'm uh, 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 giving a course that is called AI for Pathologists because I've learned that pathologists really hate it when they are getting like a black box kind of a, a, a solutions where they don't uh, understand what's going on uh, under the hood. So um, what, what um, we, we are providing a platform where the pathologists should bring their expertise and this is by providing the right annotations. And uh, so, so we try to keep it very simple and indeed the way that you teach the platform, what you're looking for is by the annotation of uh, good and bad examples and this is why we've also put a lot of effort to make this annotation uh, super uh, uh, super efficient yes, because, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, because, because because also uh, I, I, you know we've also learned that pathologists hate to annotate it's, it's boring so uh, and, and 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 this is why we really put a lot of effort on making the annotation process itself efficient and even a little bit of fun. So a little bit of a, like a game and, and also that using, you, you, you know- get points, get points for uh, doing, right? You get points or achievements oh, or no, leaderboard. No, but, 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 but I'm going to add it right away. I like it, I like it. It's uh, for me, when I, when I do the annotation, um, it's very relaxing because you have to make you know, decisions and, and, and we do like yes, no, and yes, no, and it's with nice colors. So uh, even though I'm not a pathologist, I, I, I really uh, find it uh, not too terrible. And, um, and, and also our concept is to have something very interactive. So you annotate a little bit, you get an initial solution, you can do apply QA, apply it to a slide and, and, and get a feeling on how it works. And then you can actually uh, go change, fine tune. So, so it's like a ping pong between the, the human and the machine. And, and, and I think that it's, it's more, so, so, you know, it's like um, building more complex and more comprehensive solutions and starting with something which is small and is adapting to the, to the data and the annotation that um, the user is providing. But I think in that way, we, did, we achieved two things. First would be to really respect the time that pathologists put in this effort. And, and the second thing is that um, the, 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 the pathologist is really in the loop of the AI solution creation because Typically, and, and I'm not saying it's bad, I'm only saying that typically um, companies would tell the pathologist, okay, please define the problem, please give me the data, and please do the annotation. And once you're done, thank you, we'll do the rest because we are the AI experts. Uh, our our, our um, motivation was to turn it around and say, okay, guys, this is the AI platform, you are going to use it and you are going to, to actually um, 
like, like have some kind of, uh, you know, a playground where you can explore mm -hmm. ideas. So of course our platform, you know, it doesn't solve all the pathology problems or all the computational pathology problems in the world. But the reason that we have um, focused on these three problems is because thanks to the fact that we were active for two years before we started the pathology. So, so we are quite, you know, we are already four years in this field, uh, four years plus. So, and um, we have this- so let, uh, let me just a minute, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Let's go back to, so we understand. Is it a one-time uh, annotation process or is it like uh, you have several iterations, like you do some annotation, you wait, then you do other annotations? Mm, if no, you have... it, it, uh, actually it, it, it's, it's, a, it's an iterative process and, and um, we've built a system so that uh, it learns from the very first annotation that you are giving the eight and the uh, and, and you can annotate as much as needed and you can annotate it anytime. So things are being done in a parallel. It's not like, you know, it's not, not like a, a, that you annotate, you wait, the system learns, you see the results. It's, it's a much, much quicker. It's, it's very like interactive. It's just uh, yeah. whenever you want. And do you, can you measure false positive, false negative? Sure. Because and what we, we show it to, to the user and, and then she can change or, or re-annotate it? Um, so, so basically, um, the, uh, so, so you know, it's uh, like in uh, typical supervised um, algorithms, it's, uh, it really depends on the, um, what you are getting as the ground truth. And um, the user, uh, can actually, um, so we have built the annotation mechanism in such a way that um, for, so, so the system all the time uses the annotation that the user provides and, the, um, and, and, and actually this is how it can um, assess That's its like performance. A QA, so you see, like, a, uh, you know, you can, you can you have like a QA or QC process that you can give the results to another yeah. uh, person, the same person, yeah. or annotation. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. so 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 the idea is that first you are um, developing an initial algorithm. You apply it to uh, to some slides. You get feeling okay. I like it. I don't like it. And then it's possible to actually do validation. So comparing ground ground truth annotations. You know something I. I I, I have to charge my computer. Uh, you will have to wait for one minute, sorry. No problem. Excellent. Good. Sorry. Oh, much better now. So yeah, it was it I, was I really, really like... on the the last day drops of oil. Yeah. The, I, I really like the idea of uh, uh, providing accessible AI tools. Like it's not a black box. So you can you can play with it. It's not uh, you know it's not something that you one time and that's it. Uh, yeah. Is it so maybe now or in the future? Uh, is it also related to to expl explainable AI? Like yeah. I can explain yeah. why I why I reached this uh, uh, result. Oh, yes, I, I, absolutely. And I think that the, I think one of the uh, mo most interesting. Um, things that we have seen in the last four years is that if four years ago, when we went to a, a conference and then pathologists would ask us, uh, so uh, this AI will replace us. And, and, and you know, and then they, they really have come to learn that eventually it will provide them more information. And, uh, and, and, and now I really, really see that they are eager to at least understand the main concepts or not. They're not going to, uh, you know, start writing in Python, although some of them are actually doing that. Uh, but, I, and, and I think, yes, is, I think that the first thing is to understand this monster, which is called AIs. And I think it's very important that medical um, doctors will understand what this AI is all about to, to you know, to demystify it and, and really un make them understand the ba basic principles. And eventually, I think explainable AI is, is, I, I would say that it, at some point it will become 
some kind of a standard for people who are dealing with AI in general, but in particular, it will start from medical applications because um, it, I think it's really needed so that the um, medical doctors and also that patients, uh, regulatory uh, people will trust and at least get some, uh, the, 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 let's say the, the, the reasoning of why these decisions were made. So, so I think to, 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 to understand it and to be able to criticize it and to be able to learn from it. Because right now, you know, especially with supervised approaches um, uh, for, I don't know, for counting sales, which is a very, very common task, uh, we actually try to uh, imitate what uh, a human is doing, but just doing much faster on a broader scale. But when you look at the uh, other challenges, such as uh, drug outcome prediction, which is now very, very hypey, um, it's, it's, it's very important. And, and, and it's not like there is a pathologist who will look at the slide and tell you, oh, okay, this patient is going to be uh, uh, to, to, um, to, to get better. And this patient, yeah, unfortunately, is not going to, go, to get better. Because, and this is kind of information which you are using, you know, um, deep learning, machine learning to, to extract these connections. And maybe by um, establishing such connections and showing that they are meaningful, then having um, explainable models will also provide additional information, which is beyond only this, you know, a very, very straightforward connection between uh, that is doing the drug outcome prediction. So I think that the explainability has at least two roles. One is to really um, open up the, the mechanism of decision making. To, 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 to reassure us that it's okay, we understand what is going on, and also to provide us new information, new insights that we can actually use um, to, 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 to span our knowledge and maybe to find new ways to, I don't know, to, to, to find drugs, to, uh, to treat people. And, and I think that this is a very important uh, uh, tool. Um, we are already, uh, we are very fortunate that our CTO is really one, I think, of the, um, is, 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 is very good at a lot of things, but it's specializing in explainability. So we are giving it a lot of focus here. If, so maybe if, I, can just, if I can just step in, maybe for, for the non-technical people like myself, Ken, can you just breeze through as, as, po like as quickly as possible, but as obviously um, uh, as uh, succinctly as possible, like what's the problems with supervised learning and, and why is it a black box? Um, and and, um, and and the need for explainable AI. Mm, I, I, I think, well, I, um, so, you know, it's, well, so you, you asked a few questions, so I will try to, to give uh, one answer and I hope I will be able to, to, to provide a, a complete answer. So, so first of all, when it's supervised learning, um, in supervised learning, I know uh, what is the actual result and I, I'm building this neural network that is making the predictions. So I can assess the uh, performance of the neural network when I compare the predictions made by the neural network against what is the ground truth. And the ground, this is why it's supervised because I know what to expect. And I can, in the, in the training process of a neural network, you actually uh, tune the parameters of the neural network, the weight, so that the next time it will perform better. So the next time the error will be reduced. And the way in, 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 in supervised learning, um, uh, the fact that you are actually knowing what to expect, this is what allows you to, uh, to, uh, to quantify this error. Now, um, there is nothing wrong with black box solutions. And, 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 and for example, when you want to, um, to a, I don't know, when you want to utilize AI for, a, I don't know, a, a, like a, a autonomous cars or at least to have a driver's assistance systems. So I, I you know, uh, now we have a, a new car. It's, it's too, I don't like it because, <laughs> you know why? Because it doesn't allow me when I want to uh, change lanes without a, <laughs> <laughs> without giving the signal first. It, I, I have to put force and I, I really hate it. 
and and, and so 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 it's working well because and I, I have no clue on why, uh, what's the algorithm beneath it, but I know that um, uh, a few weeks ago, it actually stopped the car because it noticed uh, a car that was going to cross uh, the road without any, any notice and it really saved my husband. So, and I don't care about the technology, it works well. So also in medicine, if you have a black box solution, which uh, really allows you to, um, let's say to screen, prostate cancer much, much quicker. It's, it's, it's great. And I think that as a diagnostic tool, which is fully validated, uh, well, it, it, it's cool. But when you talk about uh, moving forwards and uh, gaining confidence and, um, and, and extracting new insights to really enhance uh, a, a, a medical care, I think this is where you need explainability or where you should have explainability. And, and, and I think that it has, um, it has good reasons, either from regulatory point of view, because also you, you can imagine that also for self-driving cars, you need to, well, so it's not FDA, but you need to have some kind of a validation process. You have to be confident that the car will actually make reasonable decisions and will not bring you to, will not do you any harm. So, so having explainability and, and understanding the reasoning of, of these machines that we are working, which are very complex. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's like um, trying to find the conceptual uh, rules, uh, I think is very, very important, not only in the medical domain, but, but I do think that in the medical domain, you want to know that you can trust the system and that you can learn from it. And this is why I think explainability should and will play a significant role. It's, it's just, uh, let me just give you an example of explainability. Um, for example, um, you, you, you have a lot of algorithms to visualize the, what is happening in the neural network. Where in the neural network are the places that were uh, important in making specific decisions? And then you can say, oh, okay, so this part of the image, the, the, these edges, these, these textures, this, so you can relate the decisions of the neural network to something which is tangible and you, can, and, you can, and you can understand the connection. So maybe you will not go through the mathematics, which is, could, be, com could be complex and you know, and maybe you have um, moments which are, um, I don't know, of, of higher order, et cetera, but at least you will have some understanding of, of the concepts which led to specific decision. If I add to that, I think what, what's very nice in this uh, uh, solution is that you now if we, we take it to the extreme, uh, we'll have a machine that tells you, that tells the nurse, okay, give this patient uh, these pills. Why? Because this is what the algorithm says, okay? Yeah. Or tell the, the surgeon, okay, cut his left leg. Why? Yeah. Because no, that's what the, the neural network said. And we can go on. So yeah. um, what this solution provide is first the tool for the person that is the expert, is in the front to, yeah. to, to influence the system. Yeah. So, so it is not a black box. The uh, ex explainability is uh, is the what we will all we're trying to do is you know you use a neural network and you get okay do that you don't really understand the dynamics okay uh, so now we're, uh, we're trying to understand the dynamics um, so um, yeah sorry Daniel yeah no I I, yeah, so, so I just want to to add please go ahead yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I just want to add that um, I, I, I believe in people and, and I believe that uh, people have, uh, usually they have very good judgment and, and, and the having AI, I, I think that it, first and foremost, it should help us from, have, from making bad, bad decisions uh, on, the, on, the, on the road and also um, it, it should allow us to make less mistakes. And I think that it's, easier to chew when you uh, are thinking of an AI system as something which is helping you avoiding mistakes. And, and I think that there is a very large mental gap 
um, uh, when, 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 the, when the system actually tells you not what to be careful of, but what actually to do. I don't like, I don't want any system to tell me what to do. I, I, I don't mind having the system to warn me and to make my life safer and to improve my health. But uh, I think it's, uh, so as you said, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure I want to be hospitalized in a hospital where the AI will tell the nurse, give this patient that pill now because my algorithm said so. I, 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 well, my, maybe I'm old school, but uh, I, I really trust the good judgment of people. So eventually I think that AI solutions should be in the disposal and in the control of, of, of humans. And, and we should really make the most of these AI systems because I honestly believe that uh, what we are doing inside a very, very thriving ecosystem uh, is to really improve healthcare and to take away the tedious and the time consuming and, 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 and tasks from pathologists and to make pathology analysis uh, be more accurate and not different in the morning and in the night. And so, so really to, to allow the pathologists to concentrate on the higher level tasks. And, and, uh, and uh, why do you, can you en enhance collaboration with, with these models? Because if one, one uh, a pathologist is creating a model or an algorithm, what's next? They, they can like exchange or export or how, how does it work? Uh, so this, this, this is a great question. Um, so, so I think that uh, it really depends uh, because um, it, it depends on several factors. But yes, when you, uh, we say that we democratize the uh, creation of AI algorithms. And within this democracy, uh, we provide the tools for AI solutions creation. Now, what you're going to do with that, it's, it's really, uh, well, is it something that you are using on your own, in your own lab for, for your very, very specific research or for your specific uh, clinical trial? This is one thing. And if you want to share it with other uh, pathologists, then, then absolutely, we, we are um, now uh, uh, establishing some kind of place. Uh, where um, pathologists can actually exchange such solutions, but we have to do it very carefully because um, um, <coughs> I think that it's very, very important to be transparent and to explain uh, exactly what you are able to give. You know, um, I, I don't have use a the, model that you, know, you don't know who made it because you know exactly. some so, guy so, so, in the lab. Just uh, did some annotations. Okay. Exactly. And, 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 this, and this is why um, at the moment our platform is for research purposes only. It is an AI solutions generator. So, so basically it could be the very starting point uh, for creating very quickly solutions to several use cases. But if, for example, you want to take it to the diagnostic domain, and you want not only to, to, to use it for research, but also for uh, clinical purposes, then even uh, algorithms that were made very quickly, they need to go through a very, very thorough and you know, constructed and regulated uh, validation process before you can actually say, okay, I, 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 I don't, I, I'm using it for, uh, in, in, in a clinical uh, setting. So it really is different when you are using um, algorithms and you are exchanging algorithms in the research environment or you're doing that and i think i think i think it's really you should you should be very careful when you are going from research to diagnostics and, and i thought i think in the research domain absolutely I, I wanted to talk about uh the current situation we're in you know the pandemic covid 19 um almost like 31 million cases what's the connection if there is, what's the connection to deep pathology AI? Um, do you see like a rise in cases? Are, are, are pathologists using your platform? Is this related? Um, and um, okay, well, can you can you provide a solution to this uh, pandemic? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> uh, well, um, you, you know, we, we, we deal with images. And, and the, the only um, 
the only method, uh, let's say, uh, method where you can actually visualize uh, coronaviruses is with the uh, electron uh, microscope. And it's really, really for research purposes. And I think that um, most of the world is now looking at diagnosis and uh, vaccines. And, and um, there is pathology research, which is related to COVID, uh, especially not a nice one because you are, uh, you want to see the kind of damage that uh, the COVID is um, doing to the lungs and to the body organs. And uh, yeah, we, we are not involved in that, although, although pathology does play an important role. And, and I think that it can help in assessing the, the kind of you know, damage that COVID is, does to, um, that is, is doing to, uh, to, to our body. Um, I, I would say that um, there was, uh, I think there is a lot of effort to try to utilize AI solutions to, um, to predict, to assess, to provide models, uh, to try to control the, uh, um, you know, to, to control the control of the uh, of the flow of the uh, uh, disease, I, I have to say that um, uh, the, the the COVID uh, really made I think the medical community understand how important it is to be digital. Absolutely, digital digital pathology has uh, gotten a boost because uh, with the lockdowns, um, pathologists were confined at home. You, they still needed to do the analysis. So the microscope was you know, far away. And, 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 and you know, the digital, becoming digital is the enabler for application of the algorithms and the AI. So, so the first, I think what it really, really have shown is that bringing um, medical data to the digital, world to the digital domain is really, really important because it allows us to, to, to continue to do the uh, medical um, uh, treatment and analysis and diagnosis also when we are not physically located uh, near the, 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 the physical slide. And, and I think that this is enormous. Now, um, I also think that uh, having algorithms to screen and to really assist pathologists in utilizing their time in a better way. Because um, for example, you get the, the more complicated um, uh, cases uh, beforehand or uh, the system does initial an analysis for you uh, and, and then it's easier to, for you to screen. Uh, for example, we have developed a screening tool for Helicobacter pylori. Helicobacter pylori is a small germ and if uh, not treated, it can cause a lot of problems uh, in your uh, digestive system. So, so, and this is pretty boring for, for pathologists. It's very, very, very boring to find these little helicobacters in, in, the, in the huge slide. Uh, so we have developed um, a solution which actually pinpoints those areas where uh, there is a higher probability for having the helicobacter pylori. So the decision is still made by the pathologist, but, uh, it just looks first at where the system is predicting that H. pylori resides. So, and, and so, so working from afar and making your workflow more, more um, I think, more efficient is something which I think was dramatically accelerated with COVID um, because of the need, because you still needed to, you know, to cure people. Uh, but but uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't have any magic solution or even not a magical solution to COVID under my wings. Uh, I, I wish I would. Uh, really, but, uh, you know, that was the expectation. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, no, it's, it's, it's really, you know, it's really, really, uh, I, I think that COVID, you know, when it started on, on, on March and, and, and we really thought that by October it will be over with and... Um, yeah, and we will, okay, so we will just be tough for a few months and then everything will come back to normal. I, I think now we already have experience of a half a year and, and, I, and I, I can say it's really, it really made dramatic changes in the workforce, in um, the way that people are working. And, and I have to say, honestly, that I feel that uh, people like me, 
people working in my company, people working in the high tech industry uh, who are actually need a computer, electricity and internet connection and are still able to work. This is such a blessing and it's not trivial. And, and I think that these capabilities that are so common in the software development and algorithm development world is actually they are going also to other domains um, such as medical uh, service. So, so eventually I think that COVID, which is, we, we, we could have, to have a, a positive effect. Yeah, so, it, 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 I, it, has, it has positive side effects, yes. Yeah. yes. So if I just, you know, if we continue this, uh, let's say your technology, you know, everyone is using it. Where do you see, what's the next step? Like uh, a few years, from, five years from now, what's like the, the wildest uh, vision or dream? Um, um, yeah. I, th I think that the, the wildest vision, vision that I have or that we have is to really uh, see AI as a day-to-day -to -day tool that pathologists are using. And, and, I, and I want to a little bit elaborate on that. Um, Back in the 60s or the 70s, um, having computers was only uh, within the uh, access of very large companies that could afford those large uh, frame, uh, you know, mainframes and huge rooms and electricity. And, 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 and then personal computing came and made computers, you know, not only for computers in the entire world that like was said, but we, I mean, we, each of us is actually having a computer or having uh, this computer. So, so it really became something which is helping each and every one of us and it's accessible to each and every one of us. And we can also use compute capabilities even if we are not um, a develop a software developers when we are using Excel or Word, we are actually benefiting from personal computing and personal computers uh, in so many ways. And I think AI, so, you know, uh, so AI uh, started to play interesting role back in 2012, where data was um, uh, becoming, uh, you know, very, very uh, immersed and also with compute powers and GPUs, etc. And at first, it was really in the domain of the very large companies like Google and Facebook and Amazon. And, and, and then it went to smaller companies, but still, let's say, in the... Um, in the, in the medical industry, it's also in the domain of larger companies. So mm -hmm. the, I think that when AI will be a part of our day-to-day -day lives and we will not have to be AI specialists, but we will have the access to these AI solutions, AI machines that will help us in many aspects of life. I think that this is when the, the, the real uh, personal AI revolution will happen. And also I think for uh, medical research at first and then medical diagnostics, because I think that imagine that, and, and I've met so many pathologists and they have like crazy ideas. And, and, I, and I really, I, I, I'm, I'm, it, it, it's great. And I think uh, good to see people who are uh, thinking in so many directions, but in, in a way they, they don't have the tools to play with these ideas because, you know, in biology, they, everything takes time and, 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 and they are not AI or computer science experts, they are medical experts. So I think that when us, the, 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 the mathematicians and computer scientists and AI experts will be able to create tools that will be personalized AI solutions that can be used in a confident way by users who have no idea about AI, but will understand how to use it. I think that then it will be, uh, the, you know, the, the, the real revolution. Yes, and, 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 and I think it's not a far-fetched idea. I think it has to be more solid. I think it, it needs more efforts and research and validation. And, and you know, it, it, it is the process, but this is where we are aiming to have AI as a machinery, which is really accessible to every, in every lab, in every, to, to bringing AI to the hands of every pathologist. And, um, and this can also apply to, of course, uh, other, other medical doctors and also other domains. But this is, this is the vision. I, I, I really, I, I hope so, because I think it can make uh, uh, things uh, better. And uh, as long as we 
um, do it in an ethical way and we understand who is the boss and who is uh, so us humans and, and who should oh be. thank you thank you <laughs> no I, I think I think we, we still have some advantages as humans I I, I believe so I, I I believe in the good uh, in, in in humans maybe I'm naive but that, that's me <laughs> okay so Daniel you wanted to talk a little bit about, yeah let's uh, maybe the Israeli yeah yeah, I mean, we, we can wrap up. We can talk about uh, IMVC conference. Uh, you know, let's plug uh, the, if not the most uh, important deep learning and computer vision conference in Israel, and probably the only one that's put on by actual experts and, and honest, uh, uh, I guess, experts and professionals in the field. Um, Thank you. When is the conference? Yeah, so so it, it 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 should have been back then in April, and then um, we postponed it to October because we said, okay, in October we will be able to meet each other face to face, and this is not happening. So this is um this is an unusual year in so many aspects, and also for the IMVC, it's going to be a virtual event on the 29th of October. We have a very um, so the backbone of any conference is the content. And the contents is again, uh, we, we tried to, to do the most and bring the most interesting voices such as the Michal Irani and Shai Shalev Schwartz and very, very fortunate to have Tal Asner um, that we really, he, he couldn't come to, to Israel for the last few years and now he's not coming to Israel but he's speaking virtually. And uh, Tal Arbel from uh, Professor Tal Arbel was doing fantastic things in the uh, medical, uh, uh, imaging uh, and research and the uh, Tali Dekel. So we have three Tals in the conference. And Tali Dekel is, uh, you know, one of the, I think, most interesting voices. Uh, she's coming back uh, to a research position in the university and also uh, in the industry. So we have this lineup, which will be broadcasted um, partially from uh, a, a, a studio in Tel Aviv. And we will also have in parallel panels and content which will be available online and, and but I think that's a I only see you know it's so, so the content is really the backbone but the atmosphere is people meeting each other because I have to say that the vision community and the AI and vision community are is composed of nice people and, and and every year it's a lot of fun to meet each other and you know to 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 talk and discuss and the and and, and, and share ideas and and you know a little bit of gossip even i can attest yeah. to that absolutely um i i've gone two years in a row just for the viewers and um uh you yeah. know excluding the the atmosphere and the conversations they will have in person the quality of the content is absolutely the top um yeah. you'll be able to listen to yeah. uh experts in the field and heavy hitters uh debate back and forth and present their most yeah. um uh most interesting pieces of research and um if you want to get Absolutely. you know acquainted into the field and, and learn what's happening in Israel, this is the place to to go and listen to. And uh, so definitely buy a ticket. Thank you, Daniel. You 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 are, you are an excellent promoter. Thank you. I'm your spokesperson. <laughs> this is you no know, put it on your side. You don't need anything else, right? No, I, 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 it can't it can't get any better. Yeah, so, but tell me, this is like the the tenth or eleventh time. It's it's going to be the eleventh one. Um, uh, so uh, we kicked off the IMVC in uh, 2010. This was the first one. Uh, this was like um, uh, a really um, uh, an idea of Kobe Coin and myself. We we asked ourselves how come that New Zealand has like a three days um, computer vision event and Israel has only sporadic and uh, academic events where the industry is so really really thriving and. Um, active and 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 it was really great to to see that um you know that there, the, there is a very strong academy in israel for uh, computer vision and image processing and ai but most of the people they graduate uh, from their bachelor masters or phds and they go to the industry this is what most people who are in this field are eventually uh, uh, going to and, and and this is why i think it's it's also very refreshing to have um event that really brings the, the latest uh, and greatest to, to, to this community. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I hope to see 
many members of the community in, in the next uh, event. And uh, let's see, let, well, this is, you know, this is something we have to adapt to. We, ha we have no choice at the moment and uh, we didn't want to give it up uh, totally. And, and I think everybody's now struggling with trying to make virtual events as interesting as possible because it's, it's a challenge. Just, you know, uh, um, a side question. Uh, you mentioned some of the names and uh, in perspective, like for the last 10 or 11 years, um, can you tell us something about the changes in the AI ecosystem and uh, I'm specifically talking about women? Because that's uh, an interesting topic. Okay, so, there, so first of all, when you... more women in the industry? So, so, so it's, it's, it's an interesting question. Um, I, I think that throughout the time that I, I'm, I'm, I'm really more involved with the community uh, through IMVC, I think that first of all, when we started it, uh, we, didn't, we didn't have any AI. I mean, just, you know, in 2012, uh, there was the AlexNet and, and, and before that, you know, deep learning and AI were not like spoken about so much in, in international conferences, let alone our conference. And I think that we started hearing about AI and deep learning back in 2014. And then we had like two lectures and then an entire track and then the track that all the people wanted to attend. <laughs> and, and, and I think that now um, it's very uh, difficult to, to find uh, significant talks which are only dealing with classical computer vision, although there are, I mean, classical computer vision is still an important tool, but, but AI is really, um, colored uh, the, um, a lot of uh, work in this in this field. Uh, I think that the and, and 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 you really see it. And I think that this is also interesting for you. Really see that at some point, people who graduate from the university already uh, in the last I don't know four or five years already have some AI courses or experience from the university studies. But people like me, who I finished my PhD in. 2005. So, you know, I, I, I well, I, I'm a, a typical classical computer vision person and, 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 and I really needed to re-educate myself and go back to a virtual school, okay, and, and, and to gain the, the knowledge. And, and thanks God that I studied physics because a lot of the concepts in, um, you know, the optimization and the, all these structures are very, I find some similarities to um, a, to, to, to quantum mechanics and also also to a uh, um, to, to other uh, 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 concepts in uh, in physics and and, and 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 to be honest with you in computer vision there were always a relatively um, uh, there was there was always a le relatively large portion of women so in even in classical computer vision and I think also in AI you I, I think that there is a very nice presence of women. And, and I have to say that when I see um, women who are uh, in their 20s or early 30s and are doing their, you know, um, let's say first or second steps in, in, in this field, um, I feel that there are much more women now because also the, um, the domain is really, really widespread uh, where you can do uh, data analysis, data science, Computer vision and AI, and um, and 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 I, and I think that uh, there are there is also a a lot of uh, platforms that uh, uh, help women go into these uh, domains. And naturally, I would be very happy to see more women in this field. And and, and you know, and the, this is why, by the way, I joined the uh, the industry committee in the in the in the in the council for advancing women in the Ministry of Science and Technology. And by the way, tomorrow we are going to have a session on um, a bringing more women to, uh, to tech, to, from low tech to high tech. Uh, but I think it's, mm -hmm. it's so, so, so I, but I, I definitely think it's, it's very, not. Very important. Yes, and, and, but, but I think but it's not male dominated. Excuse me? No, but, but could me just, just, uh, um, just a, a, a hypothesis uh, could be that in AI 
um, you need more education or more because and in programming you don't so that's why in programming you have a, a lower percentage of women or is it not the case no I, I don't think so I, I think that the, well I think that when you do deep learning or AI you definitely need to be uh, you need to have a um, good and solid uh, background like a bachelor and master's uh, degrees uh, which is uh, relevant and I think that the, when you want to have to be a, a, an AI developer that uh, companies will chase after you should have a good combination of software development skills and algorithmic uh, skills um, I, I, I think that uh, what I've seen, and it's very, very, you know, it's only what I've seen, it's not like I've conducted research. I, I've seen that women are very much focused on the algorithmic side and they are a little bit actually reluctant to go into the software side. Uh, and, and, and I think that this is uh, changing because uh, 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 I, I think that women eventually understand, like, like, like men, by the way, that they need to develop skills that will make them uh, a wanted uh, person. Uh, because uh, what's nice is that when you have the expertise and when you are, you can bring value to companies, then it doesn't matter what is your age, what is your gender. Uh, if you uh, or uh, if you have like a, a triplet at home that you have to take care of, uh, if you can bring value and, and value, you can bring value by bringing relevant knowledge. And this knowledge is, algorithms and software development skills. And I think that the, this is a very important combination for both men and women. And I can tell you that finding people who are good in both domains is, 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 is not an easy task. That doesn't matter what gender we are talking about. So, so I think, but I think that, that I see so many efforts that uh, to bring more people to this domain. And I think that it should continue uh, and, it, and, and also women and also other populations which are underrepresented in these mm -hmm. occupations uh, because I think yeah. it's, it's a great way to, um, to, to, to empower uh, people from, uh, you know, all, all social, social uh, 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 I don't know, uh, uh, groups in, in, in society and, 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 and this, is a good, this is a good tool to, 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 advance, uh, yeah. to advance people. It's, it's fascinating, uh, you know, what you're doing, but I also uh, very much agree with, you know, the, the thoughts behind this, uh, both in the uh, pathology area, also what you do with the ecosystem and uh, women and whatever. I think, uh, Thank you. great. Thank you very I much. Really and uh, uh, it was really a lot of fun to, to talk to you. And uh, I think that they, uh, you know, if if we want to uh, to conclude with uh, with something, then I would say that I, I I think that it's a privilege to do something that I love so much, and I truly love mathematics, and it's a privilege to do something in a domain which can really help people. When I was twenty, I was also applying to a medic, me, me, medical school, and I was accepted. But then I said to myself, "Oh my God, I'm afraid of blood." So so it's it's great to. To, to take part in this activity without, you know, having to cut someone or to, uh, yeah. so, and, 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 I, and I think that this is a, a great combination to, 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 to do technology for something which is, which is good. Yeah. So, so it's great. Great. So uh, thank you very much. Was thank very you guys. It was and, a pleasure. Bye-bye. Um, Goodbye. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Han. Bye. Bye. It, it all uh, Bye-bye.